Hello everyone and welcome to Football Gentron. This time, as you might see, it's not Adam opening the show, it's me, Armen. So, <laughs> we're going to be shaking up things a little bit for you. And uh, I think we're, you're going to like it. You're going to like it because we have the Future Talents episode now in the winter break. And we have so much to talk about. But... Before we get on the future talents, the future Armenian talents, we have to start playing Mkhitaryan. I mean, this guy. I. You cannot love. You cannot not love Mkhitaryan, right? We all. Uh, of them. As yeah, much as I we, mean, as much as we talk about how he underperforms for Armenia, we still love. <laughs> which he does. But still, I mean, he just breaks record after record. I mean, uh, he was just. Picked uh, ten times, ten, ten year, uh, tenth year. He was the player of the year for the Armenian uh, Federation. Uh, he is the record breaker. Uh, also won Roma. He won won Roma December Player of the Month. Uh, best individual performance in 2020, like hat tricks, goals, assists. He found himself again in Roma. He, he's like legitimately happy all over again. Uh, yeah, back to form. Back in form, I yeah. Mean, and talking about form, he's he's not only bagging goals and he's he's doing his assisting, assisting too. He seems happy. Yes, he does. Yeah, I remember him doing that a lot for uh, Dortmund. Like he had that season exactly. where he just kept banging the goals. And like yeah. constantly, like just every game. Except he's a more mature player now. He has like a yeah, for I think, sure. I think it took him like this long to figure out like. The, getting the pressure off of him, you know? He kind of had to get out of England. I mean, he just wasn't fit for that. He wasn't... He's too he wasn't demanding. Yeah. Yeah. It's not for everyone. Man. Just because you don't make it in the Premier League doesn't mean you're not a good player. But then That's again, true. like, people say that, but they also forget that he's hands down. I don't care that they gave Paul Pogba the player of the tournament because that was BS in my opinion. And yeah, many it was. And it was. He was the reason why United won the Europa League, so... Everybody knows that, yeah. I mean, well, he is so happy in Roma right now, and he's been performing so well that it has basically earned him a contract extension. Uh, He will be staying in the Roman, in the Italian capital until uh, June 2022. Like, he's he's still got uh, 18 months ahead of him in, in Italy, so... More and more contribution, goal contributions uh, for him, other than the eight goals and seven assists. In uh, like, he's got 15 goal uh, contributions so far in Serie A, which is crazy for a playmaker. Uh, he's only behind Cristiano Ronaldo, and uh, he, I, I think he's like uh, very close to Zlatan. Maybe Heno is ahead of him. Slatten slightly ahead. I'm not sure, but the fact that he is competing like step by step so close with uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and Slatten just gives you an idea of who Mkhitaryan really is. Yeah, and we're talking right now uh, as we're recording. Tomorrow, I believe, Roma play Inter and they're three points wow. behind Inter. So if Mkhitaryan has another good performance, they get three points against Inter. Roma suddenly in second place. They're fighting for the scudetto. It's not. It's not out of the. It's not out of the realm of possibility that Mkhitaryan could lead Roma to their first Serie A title in a very long time. And then we could see him in Champions League next year. Exactly. Oh. Something we we haven't seen Mkhitaryan in Champions League since. Uh, well, he did uh, br- briefly I with don't Manchester think United. About it. <laughs> but anyway, it's a long overdue. I don't even want to think how long Mkhitaryan has been missing the Champions League. It's, yeah, I mean, he is underrated, if you think about it as well. But, Speaking of, like, the high I mean, performance, <laughs> it was, like, yeah. last week, his his goal, uh, Premier League, uh, on social media, they, they posted it, like, last week or two weeks ago, uh, the, the scissors kick. kick. Yep, the oh, sorry, scorpion kick, kick. yeah, yep, there we go. Yeah. It was the five-year anniversary, and I think, damn, it's been that long since he scored yeah. that. Wow. Time flies, man. Yeah, time does fly. It was, like, it was literally yesterday that Mkhitaryan was uh, starting to show up on TV playing Champions League for Shakhtar. 
Yeah. Like, who was this guy? And look at everything that he's achieved. That so, was, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, props to you, my man. My man. Yep. Ten times. Ten times Armenian player of the year. But, you know, he might be passing on the torch soon. Who knows? We'll see. Maybe to your boy, Vahan. Yeah, to our boy, Vahan, oh. who, who got third place in the voting. Uh, second place was Tigran Barsegan, who, of course, had the most well assists deserved. of the UEFA Nations League. I think if it wasn't for this late Mkhitaryan and resurgence, you know, like this season, this current yeah. season, I think Tico might have might have gotten the player of the year. It but. was called for. Uh, I mean, well, Tico, this national team season Tico's had, Aside from, actually, he's actually been uh, Astana player of the season as well. And uh, Tikran Balsekian, he's also, like, rumors are suddenly in the air because uh, Astana, the Kazakh champion, the Kazakh powerhouse, they're actually facing some financial trouble. And, uh, yeah, it's surprising considering all the, all the oil money uh, Kazakhstan has. But they need suddenly to cash in on uh, the the star players, maybe three or five star players. And we have some breaking news. One of the main r rumors of players departing the the Kazakh capital team is no other than Armenian star Tikran Parzekian. Where could he go, guys? Uh, I don't. You know what? LA Galaxy just got a new manager in Greg Vanny who's a former mm -hmm. Galaxy player, and I know that there's going to be a large overhaul that's going to come with that. He had previously had talks with LA Galaxy. Uh, he has family in Los Angeles as well. I don't know. I know I know. Armin's against it because it's far from Armenia, <laughs> far from the national team, not in Eastern Europe, but I would. I think uh -huh. MLS, MLS is a much higher level than, say, uh, which it Belarus. is, yeah. Or, you know, oh, no, even of course. <laughs> but so, if you compare it to Russia, I mean, Russia is basically one step from Armenia. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, credit where credit's due, MLS is a great league. But I hope he stays. Maybe, maybe he can go to Russia. Like, his level is good enough for the best six best uh, European league, which is the Russian Premier League. He's good enough. Hopefully it stays there, uh, but I don't know, man. If in the end uh, it has to do, it has to be uh, MLS. I won't be against it. Uh, maybe you can get his autograph for us. Oh yeah, I'll go. I'll I'll I go to Galaxy games regularly. Of course, not during the pandemic because it's impossible. But um, I think if you have an Armin in here, he's gonna see. He's gonna see gonna, the support. You're gonna, gonna invite him to a Sultani, was it? No, 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 no. That's different. That's different. Adi Barskaya, Asi has something. to think. He's gonna have a glass. Yeah, a glass or two. Depends on him. I maybe, maybe. Who knows? I mean, uh, Greek clubs were already pursuing Tico before he moved to Astana. Maybe it's the the chance for Greek clubs to go at it all over again. Who knows? So. Uh, Speaking of national team, like we have Mkhitaryan, our national team captain, our national team standout in uh, Tikran Barsegian, but we have to talk a little bit about our beloved coach, Joaquin Caparros. Uh, he was uh, elected, he was awarded the uh, Federation Manager of the Year. He was pretty close, well, not that close, but <laughs> second place <laughs> was to Vatan Vichaksian, Bahan's father. Uh, no, was it Vartan Minasian? I know the two Bar Vartans were on the run. In the well, the second place I believe was the under twenty one manager. Oh no, 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 no. No, no, Minasian is wow. a former coach, so yeah. no, I don't think it was. But it was the was, other one. He was on. on, on he was uh, nominated. I'll from tell you right. Now. In, uh, in FF, uh, in it, it, from what I knew, he was uh, not there though. From what I knew, he's he hasn't he. This season, this year, he didn't really. Uh, did he coach somewhere? I remember. I, if I'm not mistaken, leaving, wasn't it Rafael Nazarian? Yeah. At second place. That, I think that's the one. But I have to say, like a side comment, maybe 
I really like Vahan's father. I really like how he manages clubs. You're right. So you're right. Here we go. I'm looking right at it. Joaquin Kaparos with the Armenian national team had 134 votes. <laughs> Vardan Bichakchian, uh, manager of Arara Yerevan, with 50 votes. Rafael Nazarian, Good. who is the current under-21 manager, former CSKA uh, Armenias, with 48 mm. votes. I'm telling you, man. Vartan Bichakchian, Vahan's father, he's not to be overlooked as a manager. He's I, I wonder. Future. Is that the first time a father-son duo has been like in the Player of the Year of top three <laughs> manager so. top three? Probably for us. <laughs> yeah, for, right, us, for us, for sure. <laughs> and, <laughs> for sure. And hopefully, hopefully, guys, first time of many. Yeah, hopefully. I, I think. I think if there's anyone that's likely. Well, I don't know. I don't want to say that. I want to say if there's anyone that's likely to dominate this award, it'll yeah, be Vaughn. But, but as we'll soon find out, there's a lot more names out there than you originally perceived. Oh, we got a lot for you, listeners. So listen up. Uh, we got Armenian Premier League. I mean, we know the national team results last season. So why don't we talk a little bit about the Armenian Premier League, which has been like... Uh, Something we left out lately. Yep, let's just give it like a little quick uh, update over it. So we've got uh, on top of the table Ararat Yerevan uh, with a winter break and it's uh, they're with 18 points. Um, and they've got Ararat Armenia, don't confuse both of them by the way, with <laughs> Alashkert. Uh, Lori right behind with 17 and then we've got Noah as well with 16. Uh, at the bottom of the table, unfortunately, we have Shirak and Punic. Um, but there are some uh, changes uh, into the team with yeah. some signings. So who knows what can happen? Yeah. You know, always usually signings make a difference. Yeah. Uh, whether positive or negative. <laughs> uh, we, so yeah. you, we, have, we have five. We have five teams right now within one win away from being top of the table. So you have you have the two Arara clubs. You have Alashket, Lori, and Noah. They're literally like within two points of each other. That, that's insane. Yeah. That's, it's a very close Armenian title race, which is good because normally in the past it would be like Punic or uh, or Shidok just like demolishing yeah. everyone. Like so three, six, uh, nine points difference kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like the so English it's, Premier League it's <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's start those comparisons, right? But uh, we still should also mention what happened to Ganza Sarkapan because of the political landscape. Uh, a lot of the players from Ganza Sar, and as Ganza Sar is not going to be operating as a club anymore uh, at this moment, we don't know what the future really holds, but. Um, a lot of their players have been moving to other clubs around the league, fortunately. So hope so they will be seeing some game time. But apparently there's also some good news, right, Armin? Yeah, I mean maybe not in Armenia per se until things get back to normal, which might take a while. But for our national our compatriots abroad, we have some good news and well maybe not some so good news. Uh, we have a little bit of everything. Wanna, why don't we start off with the good news, Chines? Uh, um, we have uh, Horen, who's the player of the month and also the goal of the month for November, by the way, not December. Just not to get confused. <laughs> uh, again. Uh, and that's in Russia, by the way. So uh, we've got a Two question marks uh, for Yurchenko and Kadimian. Uh, we don't really, we cannot really suggest anything with the uh, transfers because they're free agents as well. So, not to comment on that from me. But we, I think anything the the question really becomes, yeah, we don't know. I, we have no idea. All we know is Both that Kadimian performed though. Yeah, did they I mean of course Yurchenko has been was one of the standouts in the Nations League easily. We would not have won without him. Kadimian, what about not, Kadimian's club ses, uh, club season. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's had an unreal club season. He doesn't really perform for Armenia, but that's a whole different story. Doesn't um, he, though? He does. He, look, he's, doesn't he? He doesn't play enough. He doesn't play enough to him. When he starts, he doesn't really make the impact he should be making. If, if, point you, proven. if he had a Neiman... I think his stats are not that great, but his yeah. on, on, on fail, his own field uh, work rate is uh, very similar to other players, like uh, maybe Adamian or Baidamian, Horen. Uh, okay. At the end of the day, he... there's only only one stat that matters, and that's goals and assists. So uh, at the, I don't know. Uh, if, we can if, we can if, draw, but with national team, you don't team? have. I I guess, but uh, all I'm saying is that whenever he's played uh, so far under Kaparos, he hasn't really performed, and he had a start, and he didn't. Wait, he really he didn't. Did, he did get us the the penalty that penalty. tied the game against yeah. Georgia. He did. He did get that. I'll give that to and, him. And that's not a stat, actually, if you think that's about it. That's not a stat, yeah. Mkhitaryan ended up getting the goal. Yeah, well, but that, at the end of the day, uh, everyone will be oh, nine, irony. nine different goal scorers. So, <laughs> whatever. Hey, take up, take Either up way, they should just continue, like, they, they should, in a way, perform as much as possible just for the national team, in a way. That sounds like self-interest. But the national team is the most important thing right now, like yeah, for us as a country, I guess. Yeah. And why don't we actually, since we're speaking of uh, like enigmas, what holds the future for certain players? There's this. We will start the actually the young talent section with someone who whose future, like he is a gem. He's a star. He is amazing. His talent is. Great, and uh, we're not saying this just because he's Armenian, but uh, <laughs> he's actually a very good player, and uh, he is. There are two sides pushing for him: one in Europe, one in this side of the of the Atlantic in our, in America. Who is Diram Bebekian? Well, that's a great question, and kicking off our future stars, like you said, Diram Bebekian. 20-year-old midfielder, currently a free agent. He is training with Club Bruges in Belgium, which is kind of a big deal if you think about it. He is a Los Angeles-born Armenian diaspora. He has spent a majority, or his entire youth rather, um, in the MLS youth system. He started with the Chivas USA Academy, which is... Uh, has since been defunct and reborn as the Los Angeles Football Club. He spent three very good years at the Real Salt Lake Academy, which we know uh, the friend of the podcast, Aleko Eskandarian, and Yuro Movsesian <laughs> have both played for Real Salt Lake. Uh, he most was, Armenian franchise. Yeah, so he's, he, they are the most Armenian franchise. And he's... Currently training with Bruges, which is was kind of came out of nowhere a little bit, but not that crazy when you think that he almost signed for Dinamo Kiev in 2020. And so, and he does have an, an, a contract with the MLS, and uh, I think I'm not sure, but I think uh, the MLS has some sort of uh, agreement first option, with, yeah, with the uh, Belgium uh, league. Yeah, so this seems to be something that's built into a lot of MLS contracts. I don't know if you recall, but uh, when Aleko was telling us about his exactly um, his before he signed for, uh, I believe it was Chivas before he signed for the Galaxy. Uh, yeah, they had a op first option option of I think it's called first refusal in the MLS. So if no MLS clubs want the player, then the player can move abroad. That's kind of what it becomes. If if a deal can't be struck with an MLS team, then a deal needs to be struck abroad. So I think it's a right can... of... Go ahead. Sorry, go on. I say I think it's called right of first refusal. I think that's like the legal term. It's gonna Probably. be interesting, guys. Extend it that much. Yeah. I see it though two ways. Like it's two ways though. Like okay, we, like the MLS is is in a good way that he can continue his uh um he can continue just going from one team to another. But, like, Bruges is also a good option if you think about it. Other than the fact that we have some other Armenian uh, players playing there right now, mm -hmm. 
they've got the the development part for Belgium in the past uh, probably the decade has been massive. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, he's not Belgian. It's crazy. But yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I was actually watching a webinar uh, a few months ago for um, uh, something related with coaching that we did, and uh, this webinar it was uh, the coach educator of uh, the Belgian FA. He um, he Ooh. described. He showed this graph. Uh, where the it, it shows a massive improvement of the players coming up into the national team, and it, the, the the line was just so low that their ranking was so bad that they just quickly just es- uh, accelerated all the way to to the top. Now they're in the top five, I think. Belgium, uh, the FIFA ranking, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, oh, yeah they're, they're an amazing team. Yeah, so I think in Belgium there there's a really good uh, player development scheme. So it, it's 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 good that you know he's there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's long haul. He has a, it's yeah. It's all about the long term. It is, and he hasn't signed a contract yet. He's just he is whether it's trial or training, we're not sure of the specifics. But he's there right now. Hopefully something works out and he can get a contract. If not, um, you know, he was playing with the LA Force, which is a uh, second, third division feeder team to the to LAFC. Uh, but that season yeah. ended short due to COVID. Mm-hmm. So he's still, his, he's still young, though. I mean, he's only for 20. however long, yeah, 20 years, 20 years old, for however long he stays in Belgium, he has uh, enough time to like soak everything past everything in possible like whatever he can he can le- keep learning and and in our experience and what we know about players that come to go through an american youth system there's always a good fallback in the mls so it, it wouldn't be you know he could not work out in bruges but then he could suddenly be training with diego rossi at lafc so <laughs> yeah you never know you never know and you're gonna me, be <laughs> you're gonna be busy, bro. Yeah, to me that sounds good. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to that. Uh, yeah. In terms of national team, he Ooh, is yeah. very determined to represent Armenia. He has already represented Armenia in the under 19s. He's played seven matches and scored one goal. Um, of course, that playing youth doesn't That's bind good, you to the Armenian national numbers. team. Yeah, but it, he he wants to represent Armenia. He's made it very clear. Um, so we know that when, not if, but when Diran becomes a successful yeah. attacking midfielder, we know he will be a, a large part of the Armenian national team. Go, Diran, go. And speaking of large parts of the Armenian national team, I think this next player, who is someone that I all of us have fangirled over <laughs> <laughs> this past yeah, uh, <laughs> this. <laughs> this past year and he's only gotten better and we're talking about the one and only Vahan Bichakchan the 21 year old attacking midfielder who currently plies his trade in MSK Jelina in Slovakia already at 21 years old he's been uh, rated the third best player for the Armenian national team in the year 2020 he is a very proud Gyumri born Armenian who is the only player currently on our list that has made our senior national team appearances. He is a Shirak Academy product. He started there from under 18s, pushed to the senior squad, and you know his t- talents didn't go unnoticed. We he had offers we know from Benfica, from Zenit, from Galatasaray in Turkey, which he flat out refused mm-hmm. we know of there being two italian sides one of them being fiorentina we don't know the other and two english clubs we're not sure whether those are premier league or uh championship we don't know but in 2017 our boy vahan decided that he's going to sign a five-year deal with msk jelina great position great position and it, you know what it's wreaked a lot of benefits, not only for him, but for the Armenian national team. He broke into the MSK's first team this season. He currently has nine goals to his name and two assists in 16 matches in the Fortuna League and one uh, UEFA Europa League tie, which he came off the bench. And for the national team, his record is just as good. 
He's had six goals for the under-19s. He had one goal for the under-21s. He made his senior debut during the UEFA Nations League campaign uh, on September 8th with the 2-0 win against Estonia. And he's featured in every match since then. And we have never lost when Vahan has played. That's a fact. It <laughs> he is. Regist- he registered his first assist in the 1-0 win over North Macedonia to win the group. He played that uh, group-winning Group winning pass. Uh, I... so, <laughs> that's he's he has been our boy, and <laughs> his contract is going to expire in a year and a half. So yeah, it's about time that we start thinking of what is next for Vahan. Guys, what do you guys think? What's next for him? What what is he going to do? You I have my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what Charles think though. Chodans. Yeah, Europe. I think Europe. Europe, Europe think but, uh, yeah. close country, like a close we, country. So like Italy yeah, is a good narrow it, narrow it down. I mean, oh, let's go. Any, give uh, us teams. Give us, give us things. Let's go. Where do you give think? Us, Va- give us the juice. We know Vahan is is a Mkhitaryan tier. That's where he is. That's his talent. We know that he can be just as good, if not better, than Hendrik. So More we see, personality. We've seen we have more personality. We've seen where Henrik's trajectory has taken him, and he obviously took that Ukrainian Shakhtar uh, Metalurg Donetsk route into the Bundesliga. But we have a, a guy here who's playing in Slovakia, and he shares the same agent as Marek Hamšík. Uh, Marek Hamšík is, of course, if you don't know him, a Napoli legend. He is a Slovakian national team captain who has lost to Armenia on a couple of occasions. We'll throw that out there. So <laughs> we we could see that um, there's a, a good, strong connection with Italy. Well, yeah. So I would say two teams, okay? One is like, let's, let's think of it like a bet, okay? One would be like, uh, a very high, high, like a really high possibility, and the other would be out uh, of the blue team. Okay, the 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 highest possibility one I would personally say is Fiorentina, because oh, they're nice. the kind of team where you, if you know uh, Chiesa, the um, he plays in uh, Juventus now. Yeah, he, you know, like that kind of player who has movement, who has speed. I see him in in a way like that, but also I thought Plus, of it he like he was a, really close to sign for Fiore. He was yeah, close exactly. to sign for Fiore. He That's went, another he actually, uh, reason. He, he actually spent a, a month in uh, Firenze before going to Slovakia. But okay, it's tough that they go back for him. But then again, you do you know it's a possibility. It the other one not? I thought of it like a cam, so center attacking midfield position. Mm-hmm. Which team? Had, produces the high pressure center attacking gig and press style. I like it. I like uh, this thinking. Are you going? So, don't tell me. <laughs> Where are you thinking? I I guessed Sako uh, areas. Oh, Leverkusen. Leverkusen. Nice. Oh. I I I totally see him. I I totally see him as a. Eastern European Kevin Volland. Oh. They could just get him for like Adam, two. I, I'm sorry, Adam. Yeah. I know you don't like him. I I don't think Kevin Vol. I don't rate Kevin Volland uh, that much as a player. Uh, okay. Well, I, imagine yeah. the benefits as well. Imagine the benefits. He will go there. He will learn how they play. He will come back and tell Caparos everything. <laughs> not only that. Not only that. And then he'll be sold to Chelsea for 85 million. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. He'll your, be, he'll your, be, your answers. At the end of the day, Menkayank, we have to aim high. Of course. Uh, <laughs> okay. Bad joke. Bad joke. Let's look. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know what? Since we're going this, I'll give you my inside and my outside prediction. My inside okay. prediction, I, I strongly, strongly feel he's going to sign for Napoli. Ooh. I, I, think it's, I, think, Ooh. I think he's going to be a new... A new winger, attacking midfielder, a new Lorenzo Insigne. They like their small forwards, so yeah. I think it can be. I definitely see Fiorentina because 
uh, Ribéry is is there right now, and you know he's nearing the end of his career, and he plays on the left wing or the right wing, depending you know wherever you want him. And I could see Vahan being a similar player to a Ribéry. So yeah. Uh, but for me, in I'd say inside, I'd say I'd say Napoli. I think I think that's very likely for an outside team in the top five. <laughs> This is going to be tough. I don't see him going to France. I don't see him going no. to the Premier League. I no. think the Premier League gave up on Armenians. Um, <laughs> I'm not unhappy about it, if you ask me. You know what? I think because of the connection, because of the, because of this this recent uh, this recent Spanish flair that's been going into Armenian football, I think a team that can come and and maybe convince him, Sevilla. That's my Ooh, uh, The Caparros link. Exactly. Caparros link. I think Sevilla's, Sevilla's my outside team. Uh, I think I would prefer Napoli, but Sevilla wins trophies. So you know, since, I, I think either. since we're talking Italian sides, though, I want to throw in the, the third Italian alternative. Uh, not many people know this, but one of the latest uh, Gilina stars is actually now 24-year-old Denis Favro playing center back at Lazio. So, mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe it's Fiore, maybe it's uh, Napoli, maybe it's Lazio. Who knows? Uh, you know, but I, I, I would like... I mean, go ahead, Aram, and, and then I will tell you. Are, are we dumb for not thinking that Romo would... Would want to purchase a younger, better Mkhitaryan? <laughs> I Roma wouldn't has, even think about that. Roma has a lot of, uh, th- like, uh, trequartistas, uh, a lot of uh, attacking midfielders. Yeah, yeah. They they also if, grabbed them from another uh, Italian team. So. Yeah, but if you but if you tell I mean but if you tell them, you know you you play this guy, he's literally a younger, faster. Are, and could arguably be if given the chance, because by the time Henrik got to Dortmund, he was what twenty four. Uh, yeah. So, I, if you I get this so. guy, if you get this guy like three years younger, and you he plays in a top five league at the at a much younger age, it arguably has the same or better potential as Henrik. That could be an easy move sold too. But is he ready for that kind of a, a jump though? Mkhitaryan's it depends on him. Was, was very yeah. gradual. And he would have, like, Mkhitaryan would, would have to lobby a little bit for, in, on behalf of Bahan. You know what? I think, I think that's what, kind of what Armenia needs. I don't, I don't think... Done, we don't... We, all of our players kind of go that slow building route, but you know what? Yeah. We, we need a player to be thrown into the deep end and, and it's sink or swim, and we need them to start swimming to show these you know, top five leagues, you can pick a player from Armenia mm. and they'll perform. So, I don't know. We'll, well see. Well, if anyone has the personality to do it, it's, it's definitely Vahan. It is. And, and not, not only does he have the personality, he has the price tag. He's currently MSK Jelena's most expensive player. Uh, according to Transfer Market, his value is 600,000 euros. But we all know market value doesn't really... Uh, translate directly to how much it's going to cost to purchase a player i would i would estimate i would estimate he'll go for like one no no less than two million million. yeah no less than two million but you know what let's let's bring it a little bit more let's bring it a little bit more domestic so we get we gave (laughs) him we gave him a diasporan armenian you know we gave him uh we gave them someone from gumri let's pull it back in deeper into armenia who do we got next armin well, we were talking about Vahan, a young, sneaky, skilled, smart winger. What do we have on stock, if not another Armenian, young, sneaky, smart, skilled winger? We have Artem Avanesian, born in no less than Moscow, but currently in Armenia. He is now on loan from uh, Ararat Armenia in Punic, where he's playing, playing a lot playing very good if you ask me he um he's great i really like this kid he in 2018 he moved to yerevan after like becoming 
of age after turning 18. He wanted to play professionally. He couldn't uh, do it. He couldn't have his way in Russia. So, well, he has been wanting to play for Armenia as well. So why not give the Armenian Premier League a, a shot? He came to Armenia, became Ararat Armenia rotation regular, but kind of always delivered, but never was, um, never found his way in the starting lineup. So he, at the end of the day, he needed to keep playing, keep playing. That's how you get better, you know. And uh, Punic wanted him. Everything like uh, everything added up. He signed for Punic on loan, and currently, um, watching the Punic attack, he clicks. He just uh, when we talk about chemistry, he is syncing very well with uh, the likes of my boy Gormanakian. I I want Gore <laughs> side comment. I want Gore to like return to his previous level, but uh, I don't know. That kid is a. Uh, I, I agree. I love him. I love He's, I love, you know what he has he has that like um he has that like Euro on like no that like fighting you know like oh. he always wants to, he, he always wants to fight and I, like we haven't had a player like that in the <laughs> national team since Euro and uh, obviously Vahan is like obviously brings a, a new sense of attitude for sure <laughs> but like God is like that like he he's the real like like screw you you know type of yeah, player yeah. I, I love he's, that. I love he's that street him. tough <laughs> yeah, he is street tough the, the worst part is that that's how he is without the ball, like in defense and stuff. But when you see him, when you see when the ball gets to Gormalak and it's like, who is this guy? He's so smooth, so flair. He's, <laughs> he's amazing. I he, mean, he's, he, he's a good example of a, of a player that when he was young, tried to make that move abroad, right? He had a call. He had a stint in Ukraine and it didn't, he did it didn't great. work out. I mean, I, yeah, I don't understand why he didn't, like, why he had to return to Armenia. Maybe it was his <laughs> his discipline or lack of. Yeah, I, I, from what I remember reading, uh, something that the manager wanted him to quit smoking and he didn't want to quit. I, th <laughs> I think that's this what guy. it was. Yeah. yeah but that... um, other, otherwise, his, his uh, performances on the pitch have never been less than good. Yeah. Well, it's uh, attitude. Attitude is very important for a lot yeah. of managers. And if that's oh. something that he can fix, and if if Punic have a good second half of the season and like a resurgence, maybe Kaparos might start looking his way again because he does have pedigree with the national team. Yeah, I mean, Punic has so many good Armenian talents like Gormalakian or uh, another disciplinary Ishid uh, Arasos Bilis. Yeah. He's my favorite Armenian player. Like hands down, the most talented, if you ask me. And another player that has had uh, like uh, discipline issues with the coaches, uh, routines. And uh, I think it's good, on the other hand, that Aras went to Punic, so he starts passing on the torch that we were talking about. And who else to pass on the torch if not uh, another fellow Armenian winger uh, as Avanesian? who is in, like 21 years old, he's a kid. And uh, in one season, he's had like uh, w almost one goal in seven games, Se uh, 735 minutes, which is basically it's seven, eight games. And uh, like, other than that, I see him as one of those players that even if he's not in the end of the play, like even if he doesn't score or assist, uh, and he doesn't appear in the stats all that much. What he adds to the team, like what he adds to the to the play games, the the the, the build up of the plays, it's a lot. And the the added value that he has for a team, players like Avanesian, uh, it's pure talent. I mean, this kid is bound for big thing, big things if he if he keeps growing as he's been growing, and. Uh, He's basically, he's really determined to play for Armenia. And I think I think one thing we could say, if we, we look at his current club situation, he's on loan from Arara Armenia, a club that yeah. we and a lot of Armenian journalists have rightfully criticized for not having enough Armenian players on the field. Crazy. They almost, Crazy they, I think Armen Ambar Zumian is like the, the only Armenian player that starts, and he's the captain. Um, 
And I think if 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 Avanesian proves himself, you know, with a with a good second half of the season performance uh, with Punic, he can come back from his loan to Arara Armenia and push for a starting place. You know, we want an Armenian attacking player uh, playing at one of the best clubs in Armenia because. What, what better than to have a 21-year-old winger playing in the Champions League qualifiers, you know, if if Arda Arnia yeah. do end up winning. So that's something that we can look forward to, hopefully. Yeah, but what if he moving back, like from going back from the loan uh, and Punic doesn't end up buying him for a, as a permanent deal? What if that breaks his uh, his confidence, his, uh, his chemistry as a whole? Because... The one reason he's been performing this well is because he's had a great team built around and all together with him in Punic. But that's what separates the good players from the great players. So we'll Makes see. Makes sense. We'll Makes see. Makes sense. Yep. And you know what? Let's move a, a little... Staying in Armenia, of course, because we're talking about Armenian talents and Armenian More talents that play. Talent. More, More talent. More talent. That's where we're bringing you more talent. Chadens, who is next? We've got Garen Melkonyan. He's uh, Banans Urardu born, and he's raised there. Uh, he's been in the senior squad since 2017, and uh, he's made his uh, Armenian Premier League debut at age 17. He's currently 21 years old, and the position he plays, similarly to Bichak Chan, uh, is attacking midfielder. Uh, his character wise, we could say he's a team leader, uh, definitely. Um, and recently, uh, he's been under the radar for some, uh, for some clubs in different countries, such as, uh, here in Cyprus, Russia, and, uh, well, as predicted, Kazakhstan, because uh, <laughs> we have a lot of players around <laughs> the, those countries. Um, so probably he he might make a move. We're predicting. We we think. Yeah. What do you guys think? Uh, I think. I hope so. He, yeah, I think he needs to be one of those players that moves sooner in his career rather than later. He's already shown his quality, and uh, you know, not if you look back at the the players who have made their Armenian Premier League debut at the age of seventeen. You're looking at yeah. Vaham Bichakchan. You're looking at Henrik Mkhitaryan. Quality. You're looking at Garland Mkhitaryan. You're looking at you know. Uh, you're looking at good players. So Euro- European quality, like real quality. So here's the thing, though. Like, how how can we like, if we think about it in a in a not in a comparison way, but in a more of a uh, observing the current status of the player. So mm-hmm. if we look at it in a Bichakchan's way. Like in Vichak Chan's uh, uh, state, um, what would you guys think? Like, let's say uh, if he's if he's if we're looking at Vichak Chan as an established uh, European uh, player, what would Garen do that would get him something, some position similar to his? Look, I, I think two two things. One. Uh, He's he's still behind Vahan, I would say, because they're the same age and Vahan is playing in Jelena and he already has big yeah, clubs looking is. at him. But secondly, I think the thing that a lot of Armenian players and a lot of young Armenian players are missing is a good, someone strong in their corner, you know? So I, yeah. to answer your question directly, he needs a good agent. Competition. He's oh, agent. Yeah. yeah. He needs a good agent. And I think that's that's what makes the difference. Because if mm. you look at, at Henrik was kind of fortunate, I would say. I think his, if I'm not mistaken, his mom was his yeah. agent before before Mino Raiola. So you know, she was able to cut those deals in in the Ukraine. And I'm sure uh, God and Malconian's agents are are able to make those deals in Cyprus, Russia, Kazakhstan, wherever it may be. But if you want to take your player to the next level, you're gonna need an agent that's next level. You know, you're gonna need exactly. an agent like. The one Vahan has. So, uh, to answer your question directly, that's what I think he needs. I think he needs someone good in his corner that can make these moves happen. And it's about time. I mean, four years playing the Armenian Premier League, uh, three years being starter. Like, we get it. You're good. 
you got to move on. You got to move to bigger things. Yeah, and, and not only that, uh, Chadens, Godin has also had a good youth national team run, right? Well, yeah, uh, to add to that, actually, uh, uh, he's he's played in different levels, which is uh, a very good uh, experienced. Uh, ex- he's a very good experienced player in the national team. So he has some uh, some um, background in it. So let's get to the stats. Uh, under 17, we have nine games. Uh, so that's 735 minutes, which is one goal and one uh, assist. Uh, however, he has improved a lot in the U19 level with more games uh, played with three goals and two assists. And he's in currently uh, U21 uh, level with 12 games, uh, just one goal. Uh, so in total makes 36 games and we have five goals and three assists. And so statistically speaking, he's doing well. He has 0.26 goals uh, participation per match. So he's statistically speaking, he's likely to help you score or assist in some way. The numbers are there. Yeah, he's a he's a good squad player. So it's time to make the move happen, right, guys? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Slowly, slowly, I think it should happen either way. What yeah, we, but what we've been seeing with many players. And I can remember some like uh, signature players from this phenomenon, which is Armenian players born and raised in Armenia. I mean, uh, not being able to feel confident or uh, like uh, happy abroad. It it's been ha- ha- uh, happening a lot. Uh, say like even players like Parastat Haroyan have to like said this. They have stated that it took them years to move. From Armenia, and that's that's what had, has to happen. And uh, speaking about players that actually performed abroad, we're gonna men- we're gonna talk about a player that went to Slovakia, born and raised in Armenia, by the way. Went to Slovakia, delivered, like performed in a, like top level, and came back to Armenia. I'm talking about Armen Hovannesian. He is a tall, like, big player, fast player. Like, you would think usually tall strikers as he is. Like, he is um, 20 years old at center forward, like a striker, number nine, as we say. He is already at such a young age. He's a meter and 90, uh, yeah, 90 meters tall. Like, uh, even then, he's pretty fast for his height and that's not a usual thing even less for Armenians so uh, he is necessary for Armenian national team and he's an Armenian youth national team star right now uh, he was born and raised in Punic Academy but then after moving to before moving to like senior squad in, in Punic he went to Slovakia to like the first division where he played top flight he played uh, for this club uh, Zemplin Mihalovce which is a good club in Slovakia he actually played a few games against uh, Vahan Petakcian and uh, there in Slovakia this kid Armin Hovannesian he spent his first season as a sub right he like the classic he mostly played cup ties youth squad he was never really considered for the senior squad in Slovakia but in the second season, for some reason, it was about like it will. It just happened. It was his time. He became senior squad rotation player. He started to perform. He started to deliver. And I actually watched a few of his games in uh, the Slovakian Premier League or whatever it's called. And, and he's great. <laughs> I, I I really really like what he saw, guys. I, what I saw. I mean, he scored a bunch of nice goals. Whatever nature, like. He's very versatile, as I said. He's he's tall, big, but still he's fast. One of his goals was like dribbling all over the pitch. Uh, another goal was in the box. Uh, you got your header goals, of course, for like tall forwards. Uh, he's an all-around great uh, striker. I I love this kid. Like uh, I I'm very hopeful about him. Fortuna Liga to answer your question. That's what the Slovakian hey, question is. That's the one. 
<laughs> you must know. So like, you uh, must know. Uh, Armand Hovhannisian had basically shined the most early in his career uh, representing the Armenian under-19s. In his 25 appearances for the under-19s, he had seven goals, which is a pretty good ratio considering if you look at the results of Armenian youth teams. Exactly. He is he is definitely a shining light. But it's unfortunately, not usual to score goals for Armenian youth teams. Exactly. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, he did come back from Slovakia, but he came back to a very even more unfortunate Gonzasar. Yeah. So well, silver lining, I mean like uh, a door closes, another one opens. Sadly, Gonzasar, as we know, had to end the season due to uh, due to Kapan being uh Rapan well being uh in in the midst of conflict in the geopolitics, but uh maybe that is the sad the ironic opportunity for him to move elsewhere maybe another armenian top flight team maybe abroad because he's we saw like we have proof that he has what it takes already at 20 uh to make it abroad and you know so i'm looking at who his representatives are and his representatives are legal sport llc the same agency uh that manages gevor gazarian so mm -hmm. oh that's interesting a majority of their players play in Armenia, but they also have Arman Hovhannisyan, who plays in Kazakhstan. I they love also, that guy. They also have uh, Mardik Mardigian, uh, who doesn't represent Armenia, but he represents Syria. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They also manage him as well. So, you know what? You know, and, and he's a, obviously young. He's only 20. He's a striker. He's been proven abroad. Maybe his agency can push him to Cyprus. We should push them. <laughs> yeah, we should push them. Send, let's send out some. E we'll send out some emails. We'll put it. We'll put out the word. <laughs> so hopefully, I'll get to see him here. From uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you know, give him a he's call. He's good That's enough. It. He's more than good enough. <laughs> he's more than good enough. He's proven it. Um, and hopefully that move happens. I'm sure it will. I I don't think a young player like him is gonna is just gonna sit and wait. So I'm sure there's something Youth going on. Youth national team seasons. star. Yeah, he's he's definitely Youth national team star. He's a person that is um, is is going to get a lot of attention. But speaking of another youth national team striker who has gotten a lot of attention, Chadens. We've got striker Herman striker. Kurbashian. Yep, Damn. he's a striker. He's a center forward, uh, and he plays for Rot. Vice Koblenz, Germany. Uh, we're at this point. We're Good just jumping back and forth yeah. with. Uh, we're just jumping back and forth with these countries. Anyways, <laughs> I uh, like that pronunciation in German. Yeah, I I, I tried my best. <laughs> yeah, um, Ruth Ruth Weiss. <laughs> Ruth Weiss Koblenz, something like that. I don't know. I've been to Germany once. Same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got a, he's a, character wise, again, we've got another leader uh, for the youth national team, of course. Uh, he's, he, as I said before, he's 20 years old, so he represents the U21 uh, team, but also he's the captain, which is quite interesting. Uh, he's played for. In case uh, we're wondering if he was a leader or not. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why. You know, he is, I guess. That's a leader. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, he's in uh, Colm U17 for two years, uh, which actually, as a fact, is the largest Armenian community in Germany. So I hope there are some listeners out there uh, from there. Um, and uh, so he made a really good impression there uh, for the youth national team. And uh, Gruther, Gruther uh, fourth signed him. So we see a very good similarity of this approach with uh, Sakis Adamian. Um, yeah. Which yes. I would like to add to that. Um, let's say if he uh, soon, uh, hopefully, he joins the national team. Uh, other than uh, Armin Hovhannisyan, Who's uh, that kind of player? Who's tall and he's uh, he's strong. 
who's probably going to be playing as a target man. I think Herman yeah. could be, uh, since he's also he's he, he comes from a German uh, background uh, of uh, clubs, he could be that kind of player who's very active uh, in the attacking in attacking uh, way. So let's say Gegen Press, as I mentioned before, uh, or even this 4-3-3 system. So uh, being that center forward who gets the ball and uh, makes make these uh, yeah like uh, like supporting the, there the we go. number nine. There we go. Exactly. False nine. Something like Firmino, who does in Liverpool. Uh, he would basically give, be giving the options for our other players to open up and score goals. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're both good. Yeah. They can complement each other very well. So the, so we're talking about a future. We know Armenia is going to probably stick with a 4-4-2. So we're talking about a future duo up top yeah. uh, oh, between beautiful. Kurbashan and Hovanesian, who can hold the ball up interchange good passing uh they're fast they're tall they I actually they actually play. i don't understand bro i don't understand why they don't play together all that often in the in the youth squads in armenian youth national teams like Kaparos could I, do that, though. yeah I, but i think it comes down to um uh the trend of oh everyone in europe is playing a one striker formation yeah now. You know, yeah that's, that's just that's how it is. You're playing a 4-3-3 or you're playing a 4-2-3-1. So it's, you yeah, know, but or I some remember, I remember so many times where, like, the, they both should have been called and it was either one or both or neither. Like, uh, I can't recall of many times they've played together, which they should by now. Yeah, they, they should. And, you know... Uh, I mean, look at, has, their goals, look at both their goal coefficients for Armenian youth national teams. They're, very similar. Very similar. They're like the same. Yeah, and, and they're the same, like we said again, for uh, for Hovhannisyan. For, uh, they they score a lot for a team that doesn't score a lot. So I think... Imagine it, if they did it together. Yeah. So he's currently playing in the fourth division, correct? Rotweiss is a fourth division side. And Which is pretty at, good. At his age... Uh, Sargis Adamian was playing for Hansa Rostock's uh, second team, so he's which was in the fifth tier. So he's w- one yeah. tier higher one year earlier. Uh, so if he has a similar trajectory to Sargis Adamian, uh, who ended up making the Bundesliga two only what four years ago at the age of 23. So if we're talking at at in the next three years, if Hermann can become a Bundesliga player, which is very possible because he has spent his entire youth career in Germany, we're mm. looking at a very, very strong striking option, a long-term yeah. striking option. And and he's like German quality. Like he's not good just for Eastern Europe. He's good for like even Germany or Central or Western Europe. And uh, we have him good enough in terms of ta- of talent and quality, and good enough in terms of in terms of personality. So I can see him do that. I can see him get to it. So let's uh, let's hope that he does well for Rotweiss. Let's hope that he makes a good uh, impression. And uh, we know that scouts in Germany do look at the lower tiers. They do look at the lower divisions. And yeah, they do. They they will pay attention to Armenians because Sargi Sadarman has been, uh, if anything, of a very good advertisement for a young Armenian player who spent his youth career in Germany and what types of products you know and outcomes can have that from that. Because he went to Hoffenheim and every single time he's on the pitch he does well of course he's been has has his injury issues and the covid issue but uh every time he's on the pitch he performs so hopefully herman can follow a very similar trajectory but last but not least moving on to our final player for this iteration of armenian future stars uh we have going home for you yeah, we're coming coming back home, bringing it back to the U.S. 
<laughs> bringing it back to the United States. So, so far we've been in Germany. We've been in Slovakia. We've been in Armenia. We've been in, where else? Uh, Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> we've been in the United Russia. States. Russia. And so we're bringing it back. Bringing it back to the Los United Angeles. States. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Talking... <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know my tata. You know your tata? <laughs> We're talking about Daron Iskanderian, the 18-year-old attacking midfielder who currently plays for Barca Academy AZ. He is a Los Angeles diasporan Armenian who spent four years of his time at the LA Galaxy Academy system up until the U-17s. In 2019, he spent one season at CF Gava's youth squad in Catalonia, in Spain, at the age of 17. So he was playing a couple levels above where you know where his age group is he rejoined that galaxy under 19s to finish school and he moved to real socal which is uh, real salt lake's second team he received offers from la liga clubs in spain and american colleges but according to an interview he did he turned those down to pursue a full professional career in europe he recently signed with the barcelona's academy in arizona called you heard that barcelona right AC. yeah so this is barcelona like the like actual Barcelona, Barcelona, you know, Messi, ba yeah. Yeah. Suarez, Bar Bar you know, Barcelona, Neymar. Barcelona, Barcelona. <laughs> so we're, um, we're looking at someone who has a very good opportunity to be the first Armenian player to play for FC Barcelona. And I know that that concept sounds crazy to everyone, but here's how it works. So with Barcelona AZ... You get a trial at FC Barcelona once a year where a handful of players are selected to join FC Barcelona. And that could be at any level. That could be they're under 19, under 20, under 21, under 22, uh, Barcelona B or Barcelona A. So several of these, several players that are currently in the MLS have come through Barcelona AZ Academy, including uh, some MLS Cup winners, including some players at LAFC, Real Salt Lake, uh, New York City FC. They're all around the league uh, because these players have gone on trial at Barcelona. And Barcelona AZ is a club that a lot of um, American MLS clubs really keep a close eye on. So basically what they do is they see these players that Barcelona is looking at and then they kind of just steal them away from them. So there's a very, very high chance that Daron well, Daron's definitely going to go get a trial at Barcelona. And sooner or later, <laughs> if he doesn't get an offer from Barcelona, he is 100% likely to be offered a full pro contract in the MLS next season. You heard that? So we have a... And Barcelona AZ have have had some... Let, let's, let's list off some of the teams. So in the past four years, Barcelona AZ have had players sign in the MLS for LA Galaxy, LAFC... New York City FC, Real Salt Lake. If we're talking abroad, they've signed with uh, they've signed players with CD Leganes in Spain, FC Schalke Nolfia in the Bundesliga, and Liverpool. <laughs> There's a uh, one Barcelona AZ kid signed for Liverpool Football Club. That's the Liverpool Football Club. That's so, pretty good, isn't it? That's insane. So we I'd have a say. kid who has an opportunity to play trial at FC Barcelona. If it doesn't work out. It's very looking very likely that you know LA Galaxy or LAFC are gonna want a kid that's young, that's good, that's talented, which is also a plus. And there's also an outside chance of other European teams coming in for him. In terms of national team prospects, uh, and you're still, you're asking, okay, guys, this kid's crazy. How come I've never heard of him? Well, you've never heard of him because obviously you don't do the research like how we do. But <laughs> he, a lot of people do their research on this kid. He's been invited to the USA Under-15s twice. So he's clearly on U.S. soccer's radar. Similar Aleko story. He's on the U.S.'s radar. But he has played under 15, 16, and 17 for Armenia. And he's made it very clear he wants to represent Armenia internationally. So that he's already on the FFA's radar. So despite interest from U.S. <laughs> soccer, Dodon wants to play for Armenia. And um, I believe that 
as long as he like uh, as long as he doesn't make it as far as say Liverpool or Schalke, uh, there's a pretty good possibility that the U.S. are not going to push for him all that hard. Yeah, probably not because he's already made uh, a good indication that he wants to be uh, an Armenian exactly. star. Exactly. So, so if I'm, he goes to MLS, who knows? Especially LA. Yeah, the Ch- Chadens, Liverpool. Liverpool's a possibility. Liverpool <laughs> looks at Barcelona AZ. How does that make you feel? Well, it's actually the team that I like. So <laughs> quite insane. Yeah, quite yeah. insane. So Chadens. Would you choose like that on going to Liverpool and, and ending up playing for the US or say uh I don't know Leganes or maybe an even weaker team? So you like uh who knows like uh Belgium or uh, uh like uh AZ Altmar or Ajax but he plays for Armenia. What would you choose? Club or country? I would choose whatever he chooses that's best for him. Look, we just want him to succeed. Uh, so we well, okay. So Armin, your your hope. question's kind. Armin, your question's kind of unfair because he already clearly indicates he wants to play for Armenia. He's not gonna uh-huh. play for the US. So it's uh, the best club he can get into. Go for it. Full speed ahead. Yep. <laughs> so that we're, we can have him play we're for us. rooting for him. Yeah, we are. Yep. We're not only rooting for Dotton, but we're rooting for every single one of these players that we've listed in today's episode in part one of the future stars of Armenian football. Uh, so much talent. There's so much more talent. We have a couple more sets coming your way. So until the next set of players, this has been Football Gentron. I have been Adam. Uh, Armen, Chadens, thank you for joining today. This was fun. Until the next set, goodbye.